Hi again, everyone. Welcome to our course in College Algebra. Today we are going to be discussing combining functions, that is, making new functions from functions that we already know. So the key ideas that we're going to go over in this video and the next one are function arithmetic and function composition. I always like to start this out with a kind of example. So let's imagine that we have like a, I don't know, like some kind of local arts festival. And we decide we are going to open a booth at the arts festival and sell t-shirts. So we're going to sell t-shirts for $25. each. The revenue for selling X t-shirts is R of X equals 25X. Okay, so simple. It's a function that takes the number of shirts sold as the input and gives us the amount of money we get in revenue as the output. Now, of course, revenue means the amount of money we get coming in. So, uh, of course, that's not the entire picture, right? You have to account for the cost of the shirts. And usually there is a cost associated with setting up one of these booths. So we'll continue with our example and we'll say, suppose... The cost for the booth is, I don't know, $150. And each shirt costs $18. Let's do this. We'll say find the profit... for selling, oh, how about we do this? Find the profit for selling 28 shirts. Okay, so the cost for selling X shirts is given by another function, C of X equals 18X plus 150. Okay, 150 because that's the charge for setting up the booth, and then $18 per shirt. So to find the cost for X t-shirts, I take whatever X is, I take my input value, multiply by 18, add 150. This is asking us to find the profit for selling X shirts, 28 shirts. Now let's do, we'll do this, R of 28, the revenue that I get for selling 28 shirts is 25 times 28. And let's do some calculating here. Uh, that looks like 700 to me. I'm just going to go ahead and check on a calculator just to make sure. Um, 25 times 28, 700. Great. So we get $700 coming in for those shirts. But now, of course, we had to lay out money to even get the booth, and we have to pay for the shirts. So we have to account for cost. The cost of 28 shirts, 18 times 28 plus 150, or sorry, yeah, 18 times 28 plus 150, So the cost for that many shirts is six fifty four. So the profit can be found by taking this amount of revenue that we had coming in and subtracting the amount that we had to spend to make that happen. I get forty six dollars if we do seven hundred minus six fifty six. 
Okay, so the basic idea here is that your profit is revenue minus cost. And we have a revenue function and we have a cost function. And we do the subtraction to uh, get profit. So this is a situation where it makes sense to subtract functions. So what we usually do is we write it this way. Profit for X t-shirts is equal to revenue minus cost of X, where this means what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take whatever input we're given, put that into the revenue function, and then take what we're given and put that into the cost function and then subtract the two. Okay, so this is an example of subtraction of two functions. And we can generate scenarios where it makes sense to add functions, or where it makes sense to multiply functions, or where it makes sense to divide functions. So once you um, get the basics, the mechanics are actually pretty easy. So let's do an example here. Let f of x equal, let's do something like 5x plus 1, nice linear function, and g of x be equal to x squared plus 2. Evaluate each. Okay, so 1, let's do f plus g of 4. So here's what we do. We find f of 4, figure out what that is. It's 21, right? Don't forget your basics here. This is something we talked about way back at the beginning of the course, right? This here is instructions. It's telling you how to find the output value if I give you the input value x. And this rule says whatever the input is, multiply by 4, add 1. Input is 4, multiply that by 5. Sorry, multiply by 5 and add 1. Input is 4, multiply by 5, you get 20, add 1, 21. We also need to compute g of 4. Uh, 18 I'm getting. The rule for g says square your input and then add 2. And this problem is asking me to add the two functions. So I do 21 plus 18, 39. Let's do this. Let's do g minus f of 7. g of 7. I figure that out. 51. f of 7. 36. So to, for this problem, 51 minus 36, I'm getting 15. Check on my calculator. I was right. Okay, great. 15. So um, the notation, uh, the idea is, is really simple. It builds on two things you already know. You know arithmetic, right? You know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And you know how function notation works. So this just combines the two things. Let's do a couple more here. Uh, let's do f times g of x. Usually we don't even write anything in the middle when we're doing a multiplication. You'll see why in the next video on function composition. Okay, now in the previous two examples, we were given a specific numerical input. And here the input is a variable. So what I do is I take f of x, which is 5x plus 1, and g of x, and I multiply them. Now, I can do the arithmetic here. I get 5x squared. Nope, nope, sorry, that's 5x cubed, because it's 5x times x squared. So 5x cubed plus x squared plus 10x plus 2. Okay, so there is my... Um, my resulting product. Okay, so the thing I want to emphasize with this example is 
you can do this with either a numerical input or with a variable input. If you use a variable, you're going to get a variable expression as output here. Uh, let's try this. Let's do g over f of x. g over f of x, well, easy enough. Can't really simplify this. We just take the function g, put it over the function f. Let me pause a sec. Okay. So, um, we've got uh, g over f. We can't really simplify. I do want to take a second to talk about the domain of this function. This is x such that x is not equal to negative one-fifth. It's pretty easy to see why. This particular example involves division, okay? And as we know, division by zero is undefined. So I am not allowed to use an x value that would make my denominator zero. So what x value would that be? Well, this is trouble. If 5x plus 1 equals 0, I'm in trouble. Of course, I can solve and figure out which x value makes that true, and just x equals negative 1 fifth. There we go. Okay, so function arithmetic. Uh, let me change up here, and we'll do one or two on my math lab. reason I want to show you this one is this is a question that might trip people up, but it's actually a really easy question, okay? They say if f of 4 is 4 and g of 4 is 9, what is f plus g of 4? And you might say, well, okay, Dr. Mack just did some problems like this, so you have to take the 4, put it into f, and then find the output and put it into g and find the output, and then you add them together. And yeah, that's right, but they haven't told us the formula. The good news is they don't really need to. They told us that if you put 4 into f, you get 4 back out. If you put 4 into g, you get 9. Okay? So the answer here, 13. Okay? Done. Easy question. Okay? Once again here, you're talking about multiplying the two functions. They give us a variable input, so we just take the expression for f of x, and multiply by the expression for g of x, 12x power 3. Okay? Let's use our rules for exponents there. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about an example like that later in our next video. So this was all about arithmetic of functions. So there are going to be questions on the homework assignment that require you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And good news, it's really easy once you get a little practice with the notation.